Welcome to today's 5-minute lesson. I'm going to be talking about electron configuration today as it relates to the periodic table. So, you've probably seen the periodic table look something like this, right? This is the periodic table of the elements. Um, so, I'm going to briefly mention where's the word, why is it called that? The word period is the key word. Of course, it's a table, this means there's a bunch of words, a bunch of elements lined up in it, table of elements, but the reason we call it periodic is because it has a period, which means it goes through a repeating cycle, right? Anything that has a period, that's what it does, okay? Um, so, the elements are just lined up in order of their uh, atomic number, um, one, two, three, four, etc. But there's a repeating cycle, and the repeating cycle is not um, doesn't really have anything to do with the atomic number. We're not putting them in rows of 10 or rows of 5 or anything like that. Instead, we're lining them up by their behavior, and in particular, the behavior of an atom has to do with the behavior of its electrons. So, uh, for example, uh, remember how I talked about already the, um, how an electron is basically falling towards the nucleus of an atom until it occupies the lowest energy level. Well, that's normally what an electron does. You can actually add energy to it and it'll go up to a higher level and when it goes back down, it'll release energy in the form of a photon. That's why things glow or give off light when they're energized. When they're, that's why, you know, the lights, the sun, other things that are glowing when they're hot, that's what they're doing. The electron goes up, absorbs energy, goes back down, releases energy. But when it's in the lowest possible state, we call it the ground state. And so if I add more electrons to the ground, uh, and they go to the ground state, the lowest energy level available uh, for these electrons, they're going to start filling up those orbitals. Now remember the orbitals when I mentioned, there's, uh, there's only a 1s, but then when I get to, to n equals 2, there's a 2s and a 2p, and when I get to 3, there's a 3s, 3p, and 3d, and so forth. So I'm going to be filling orbitals in that order. Um, keep in mind, again, also remember that an s orbital, it looks just like a cloud, there's a 1s and a 2s and a 3s, etc. And then the p orbitals kind of look sort of like, kind of like two clouds at once, and so there's uh, a 2p, a 3p, etc. Um, for d's, they start to look more intricate, so often they look like four clouds, although sometimes they kind of also look like something else. Um, they look like other things also. And so they start at 3, 3D, 40, etc. And then Fs all look very complicated. They can look like 6 or 8, eight different clouds all at once. And that's, uh, those are, they start at 4, so 4F, four etc. Um, but they aren't just filled 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P, 3D, 4S, 4 They're not actually filled that way. Instead, the best way to understand how they're filled is to look at this again and imagine I'm going to draw some lines down this way. I'm going to draw some lines down. That's the order in which they're filled. So basically, if I'm starting to add, if I basically, if I take an atom and I strip off all of the electrons and it's left with just a, a nucleus and I start adding electrons one by one, they're going to go 1s, 2s, and there's going to be two in each one. 1s2, that's a number you put in each one. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and so forth. But when I get to 3s2, and I'm going to put 3d6, the next electrons, the 4s is actually, even though it's a larger cloud and it's a larger space, it's actually less energy to add electrons to the 4s than to the 3d. And so that's why I'm going to be adding electrons to uh, the, the uh, 4s before I go to the 3d. And that creates a very interesting um, way to look at the periodic table because I have this block here is going to be the S block. There's this 1s, 2s, etc. And here I've got the P block, right? And that's why it's the periodic table shaped the way it is. And then the D block is this guy, and here at the bottom is the F, right? So if I start adding electrons, I go 1s, 2, 1s, 1, 2, 2s, 1, 2, 2, 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3s, 3p, 4s, and then you go 3d and then back to 4p, and then, and so on and so forth. So the periodic table tells you the electron configuration, and the electron configuration tells you the periodic table, the shape of the periodic table. They're deeply interconnected. Um, and again, remember, it's the properties of the electrons that creates the shape of the periodic table. It doesn't really have very much to do with the number of protons, except that how it relates to the behavior of the electrons. Um, 
What are those properties? I'm going to talk about periodic trends uh, and valence electrons in the next five-minute lesson. Thanks for watching.